lyrics of the lost. Ah, hello, and blessings be upon you for joining us in a new year of Lottle. So we're calling it now. Well, if if there is an acronym, that's what it is. Lottle. Lottle, yes. Happy New Year to you, Dave. And Happy New Year to you, Peter. I'm very excited to be back. Ah, excellent. Fantastic. Yes. We could go on forever with witty banter like this, back and forth. (laughs) Um, But, you know, it's a fresh New Year, so let's hear from some fresh young faces who are now 40-ish, because (laughs) episode 28 is this. Mm, Mmm, That is the actual title. By uh, Hanson. 1997, and uh, that's the version we all know, although there was a slower version of the song released a year earlier. Anyway, um, written by Hansen, being the three brothers, Isaac, Taylor, and Zach. Zach was the youngest, but uh, last year, actually still is, um, but last year he was ordained as a deacon in the Eastern Orthodox Church. True story. All grown up. So it was Zach and not Isaac? I- Oh, there's two. There's an Isaac and yeah. a Zach. The Isaac's the big one. Zach's the little one, right? Yeah. Isaac had um, braces in the uh, in the music video, and the, the two younger ones were too young for braces, probably. But yes, yeah, didn't apparently need them either. But uh, you know, yes, and they all have many children now. I think. Yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, between them all, about fifteen. Yes, so yes. very much grown up. Yes. I was going to say I, I did listen to that original version. Mm, me too. And it's not very different, I have to say. No, just a bit slower. A little bit slower. And I think the producers of the single version added some record scratchy sounds to make it seem a bit more... Modern and gritty. Yes, and contemporary and indie and a bit of hip-hop sounding, which (laughs) from this distance have just made it sound really dated. Oh, yeah, but it was was totally street at the time. Oh, absolutely. There were... Badass, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I have to say I was surprised that this song actually had lyrics and uh, I thought it was maybe just a, a series of vocal scatting, do whoppy bop type noises, um, which is all I remembered of it. Well, yeah, this has been quite an educational uh, process because I also had absolutely no idea what any of the words were. Yeah. Apart from the non-words in the chorus. Mm, mm, they're, they're quite hard to make out. Yes. So, look, thank you for suggesting we do this song because I, I genuinely learned something the last few weeks. Yeah. Um, I was yeah even more surprised uh, that the lyrics tell a sort of jaded, world-weary perspective on relationships and ageing. Indeed. One of the writers is 11 years old, for Christ's sake. I know. I mean, how has he become so broken and worn down by disappointment at this point? I know. I just want to... Go up to them and give them a big hug and just say, oh, careful. who hurt you, boys? Careful. Yeah, well, <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe not a hug. No touchy, no touchy, touchy. No, sorry. A platonic hug. A, a concerned look. Right, right. And just ask, who hurt you? Who hurt you? Why are you so cynical at such a young age? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was primary school really that much of a soul-destroying grind? Yeah. Or el- elementary school for them if they're in the US? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they seem to have come from a stable home life. Yeah. A big, I think, quite religious family. J- judging by the video, their parents let them practice in the living room, which is quite nice. That's true. Yeah. What What made them so negative? I guess they, they're just using their imaginations. They're trying to project themselves as, as older people and what they might be concerned about. I guess. They were... Um, Dumbing it down for the old people or something, I guess. Not writing about their own lives, but trying to think about older people that listen to music. Yeah. Thanks for pandering to us, uh, boys. That's <laughs> great work. Yeah, and, uh, and our sad old lives. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it is hard to make out a lot of the lyrics, uh, which is perhaps why I never noticed them. <laughs> yes. But, um, yeah, the first verse. Um, oh, to the lyrics. The lyrics, ray. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's get into the lyrics. The first verse includes. 
You have so many relationships in this life. Only one or two will last. You go through all the pain and strife. You go through all the pain and strife. You turn your back and they're gone so fast. Then you turn your back and they're gone so fast. So yeah, apparently people have just been letting the Hansons down. Yeah. The older brothers, Taylor and Zach, 13 and 16, they would have just started their uh, middle school and high school by this time. And I can sort of relate there because... I myself had carefully nurtured friendships throughout primary school, only only for them to get sent to a different high school than me. Uh. And then I knew almost nobody at our high school. I believe Dave had it much easier, um, as pretty much everyone from your primary school all just moved together to the high school that was conveniently right next door. That's true, but it doesn't mean they liked me. Oh, I'm sure you were well liked. <laughs> And you, frankly, you don't know the pain and trauma that me and the Hansons had been going through at this formative juncture. Um, we'd lost so many relationships. And uh, frankly, Dave, I think you need to acknowledge your privilege in the uh, school district catchment area type system. Well, maybe, but you got the chance to reinvent yourself. Oh, geez, I wish, I wish I'd seen it that way. <laughs> yeah, you Turned up at this new school, you could be the cool, mysterious guy. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> You're, um, I don't think I was, though. Christian Slater in Heathers or... Oh. Yeah, but at year one in high school, a lot of people are new. You, you can't really stand out, I guess. Well, that's the last thing you want to do, really, isn't it? Stand out when you're 12. Yeah, that can be problematic. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Unless you're like Christian Slater and you have a gun that you can bring to school. Yes. I don't remember you bringing a gun to school. A pair of scissors, maybe, but not a gun. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, and anyway, I think my mum was uh, quite pleased that I was leaving all these other friends behind because in primary school, I hung out with some kids that uh, that got caught shoplifting. <sighs> she did ask me not to see them anymore. Wow. She wasn't to know that the only difference between me and them was that I never got caught. I'm sure I told you I, I used to shoplift um, plastic Smurfs from the local petrol station. I had an addiction and I couldn't stop. I was grabbing maybe a Smurf a week at one point. Well, and, and were you selling them on the blue market? No, no, no. They were all for my own consumption. <laughs> oh. The blue market. That's cute. Yeah, it's good, wasn't it? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, blue and white. Anyway, I don't like to talk about that part of my life anymore, and I'm, I'm sorry you brought it up. Um. <laughs> As the Hansons uh, warm to their uh, theme of relationships lost, they reveal an actual uh, significance in the song title. At one point, I think it's just after the second verse, Taylor sings, In an umbop, they're gone. Yes. Meaning the relationships. Yes. So Hanson are referring to an umbop as a new unit of time. Hmm. Yeah, and the, the USA you know, didn't adopt the uh, decimal system, so it seems unlikely they would be ready for the mbop. But um, we're all at least mostly familiar with bop, which has long been used in music. That's true. Sometimes to bop is also to dance, and you can bop till you drop if you dance too much. You can. Sometimes bop is to hit someone lightly on the head with something, similar to a boop, which is to... Uh, touch someone lightly on the nose, oh. usually while also saying, boop. That would have been a much nicer song, wouldn't it, if it was, mm, mm, boop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Different sound, but could be catchy. I mean, it wouldn't have fit so much with the negative theme, but, mm, boop, that's quite positive. Mm. Yeah. It would have gone with dog videos quite nicely. They could have gone for a younger crowd instead of an older crowd, you know, pandering downwards instead of upwards. True. Mm, boop. But no, uh, this is this is bop. And uh, when sung, certainly is as it is here. It's uh, it's meant as a sort of vocal beat when you can't think of an actual lyric to use. And uh, here I refer listeners back to our episode on Phil Collins' Susudio in that uh -huh. similar regard. Indeed, yes. Yeah, but no, this is bop. An umbop, however, is something new. And uh, going by the name, I think they may be using uh, Roman numerals to suggest that there's. 3,000 bops in an mbop because ah. they spelled it with three M's and M is a thousand. 
That's true. Yeah. And uh, if you convert this to our current measures of time, I've, uh, I've isolated the bops sung in this song and found they are 0.3 of one second on average. And uh, so 3,000 of those is exactly 15 minutes. Oh. So we're talking about 15-minute relationships is what they're singing about. Oh, like 15 minutes of fame, but you get dumped at the end. Yeah. And that's maybe long enough to meet someone at a party. Yeah. Have a chat. Yeah. And then, okay, maybe, yeah, never see them again. They're gone in an umbop. Mm. Maybe the Hansons are just getting way too invested in these short chats. You might make polite conversation with a stranger at a bus stop for 15 minutes, but you shouldn't be devastated if they get on a different bus never to be seen again. And you, and you shouldn't need to write a song about the death of these relationships. They're, they're more acquaintances than relationships anyway. So Yeah. Well, do you think they were getting into speed dating and then just sort of reading too much into the uh, very brief Ooh, yeah, it's a- uh, time they spent with each each speed dating partner. Well, they're a bit young for speed dating, I would think. But uh, well, that's true. That's true. But yeah, yeah. Uh, fifteen minutes. Uh, I think that's probably. Mm. I've never done speed dating, but I think it's like you get no. three or five minutes or something. Oh, okay. Fast chip. You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? Should I have? It's a ship that made the Kessel Run in less than twelve. Bob. Very good. An alternative thought is that the M's in Mbop could stand for the Greek unit mega, which means a million, Ooh. as in a megabyte, an MB. And in that case, mbop would mean a million times a million times a million uh, bops. And even at 0.3 seconds each, that still comes to just over nine and a half billion years Ooh. of bop, 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 etc. You get the idea. So relationship lasts... Roughly twice the age of the Earth. All right, yeah. That's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, which is, um, that's a long time for any relationship. Yeah. Too long, some people would say. Well, yes. Could wear out your welcome by that point. And uh, Zach Hansen, the youngest at only 11 when this song came out, he's only uh, one 864 millionth of a full Greek mbop. (laughs) So that's not a lot of relationship time for him. And he really shouldn't have lost any by this point. Yeah. So he's got a, a long, long life of broken relationships ahead of him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Almost an infinity of them. Whew. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Well. Bob. <laughs> yes. I also, I also, thank you. <laughs> I was also fascinated by what Bop might mean in this context. Mm. I sort of looked a little bit at the history of made up words in pop songs, so, you know, all the way from Mary Poppins singing oh. supercalifragicexpialidocious. <laughs> Susudio. Susudio, yes, that's in there. If you're going all the way to the 80s, Little Richard, a wop bop a loo mop a lop bam oh. boom, mm. all that stuff. Steve Miller speaking about the pompitus of love, which is actually a made-up word based on mishearing another made-up word. Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is weird. Yeah. That's interesting. Exactly, yeah. Uh, Got the old Spice Girls uh, telling us they really, really wanted to zig a zig R. Oh, I don't even know that one, but I believe it. It's, um, uh, what is it, wannabe? I really, really, really want to zig a zig R. Okay. Yeah. Which I always thought was uh, somehow sexual in nature, but as it turns out, uh, it was a nickname they gave to somebody who shared a studio with them. Oh. Um, and it actually means shit and cigars. Uh, okay. Because this guy used to go to the toilet and smoke. There you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that would cover up the smell. Yes. Maybe. So, bopping. Mm. You covered a few meanings of the word bop. I did. There are some more sexual meanings to the word bop. Oh, really? Oh, yes. <sighs> Can be a term for oral sex. Oh, Nate, you're, you're thinking of bap, aren't you? <laughs> So I, I do sometimes think of baps, but no, in this in this instance, I was thinking of bop. Could be oral sex to bop. Yes. Hmm. And of course, our old friend Cindy Lauper, whom we've covered in the podcast previously, yes. uh, had a song called She Bop, which is a kind of homage to masturbating. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Cindy cannot stop- with the uh, The little man in the rowboat. Yes. She cannot stop messing with the danger zone, apparently. <laughs> 
Did she have a song called Danger Zone? Or <laughs> I remember Fly Me to the Danger Zone. But yeah, that was from um... Top Gun. Yes, Top Gun. Yes, <laughs> that was a bit of a wank. So yeah. <laughs> Well, and so any other slang meanings for bop? Well, it can also be a woman who's keen to perform sexual favours. So there's a lot of okay. sex-related meanings of bop. But I was thinking about this masturbation-related meaning, uh-huh. particularly as this is a song by teenage boys. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, of course. And then when you come to the later parts of the song, they start talking about planting seeds. Mm. And that's obviously a well-known euphemism for sperm. Yep. And we've discussed flower, rose analogies before. Oh, rose, yes. Yes, rose. indeed. So planting a seed and seeing what kind of flower grows mm. just sounds like having loads and loads of random sex. Mm. Even at this age. Even at this stage. <laughs> well, I mean, they seem to be quite mature in their thought processes. Well, yeah. So you've got this sort of negativity about human relationships uh, and the negative about people's capacity to love and to care. Mm. So... It's kind of like a sort of nihilistic call to action here, oh. uh, calling people to just indiscriminately but covertly ejaculate oh. everywhere. Plant your seed everywhere. Oh, okay. Yes. Just, I see. You could plant it inside other people to see which seed grows, or you can plant your seed by just frequently bopping. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, uh, just forget about all these people and relationships and just masturbate on your own and you'll be fine. I Um, I thought you were going to say that was the message. Well, also, I mean, that's, yes. I mean, I think this is more just about indiscriminate spreading of your seed. Right. Even donating to the sperm bank. That's another way you could do it. You can see Hmm. that's going to be growing flowers all over the place, right? I guess so. All relationships are doomed. Nobody cares about anyone. You might as well just spread your seed everywhere. Hmm. Hmm. Although if your relationship lasts nine and a half billion years, it's, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a long way until doom. So That's true. That is true. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. I hadn't taken that time factor into account. But it could also be 15 minutes, so that's fine. Yeah. Well, I was wondering if this was also related to the unit of time, right? So an mbop as a unit of time, mm-hmm. I wonder if they're still referring to this sort of random casual sex. The relationship is over in the time that it takes to ejaculate. Mbop. It's over. Mm-hmm. No strings. No one cares. Wham, bam. Thank you, man. <laughs> uh, we're back to high school. Yeah. We had a, uh, a high school teacher whose favorite saying was that. Indeed. A phys ed yes. teacher taught people about the birds and the bees. Yeah. Slightly wow. off topic. Yeah. Slightly off topic, but it also reminded me of a story that, you know, the producer, musician Moby hmm. once told a story in an interview where he claimed that when he went to like award shows or any kind of celebrity do mm. he would play a game called knob touch uh, <laughs> in which his aim was to secretly get out his penis and touch the clothing of as many famous people as he could with his penis oh my lord unfortunately he later retracted that and said he made it all up yeah on legal advice he came out with yeah. that yeah announcement. But, <laughs> but, but, but then later still in his uh, autobiography he also claimed to have knob touched donald trump so it's hard to know what's true <laughs> but <laughs> You don't want to do that. You might catch something. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. But anyway, it, it just seemed like this was a similar thing. Instead of just randomly touching people with your knob, you're just randomly ejaculating. Mm. Or, you know, if they're losing friends in an umbop, mm. perhaps um, they're with friends and the Hansons just start masturbating and their friends go, oh, my God. And they just, uh, <laughs> they're gone. <laughs> they just walk away and uh, never to be seen again. Well, oh, I, I, I go, damn it, that's another relationship <laughs> lost. What is going on here? Mind you, I guess if, if people are out staying there welcome at your house, it is a good way to get people to leave. <laughs> Instead of just putting the chairs on the table, doing the washing <laughs> up. And <laughs> yeah, chairs on the table, do the washing up, unzip your fly. Yeah, probably time to go. Actually, I did have one last uh, theory on the uh, the title, mm. and I thought this would just cleanse the palate from all the maths talk I made earlier. Oh, yes. But maybe Taylor Hansen thought of this while he was actually in the toilet going, <coughs> plop. Uh. I'm very sorry. <coughs> Bop. Plop. So do you think this was the song originally called Mplop? Or that's the noise he heard and he thought, hey, that sounds, hey, I could just go mbop. Mm. Yeah, could have evolved. 
Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. You never know. Um, moving on to the second verse. When you get old, start losing your hair. Can you tell me who will still care? Mm. And they repeat that scenario a couple of times. And really, these boys were very young to be worrying about hair loss. But like you say, with the, the lovely hair they had, the, um, mm. the worry might have led them to overcompensate in keeping their blonde hair very long, which was kind of their signature look yes. at the time. Yes, We don't know if they went the, uh, the full Howard Hughes, um, keeping their fingernails long too and storing urine in jars. It's just not clear. Or, or maybe the, uh, the worry over their hair is, is because a family member uh, is already bald and, and they see that looming close in their future. But, uh, but I checked photos of the, the handsome parents and, and they both seem uh, plenty hairy enough. Yeah, mm. the hirsute Hansons. Yeah, yeah. It could be the hirsutes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was wondering if this was a. They were making predictions of their own possible career trajectory. Right. Like at that point, they're effectively child stars. Yeah. And, you know, the, the expected trajectory would be, you know, they start off super popular. They've had this big hit. Mm. You know, they're very popular, but they're essentially considered a novelty act. Loads of teenage girls screaming at them. Mm. They get older, they get less cute, mm. possibly start losing their hair. Yeah. Voices break, they lose their lovely high voices. Yeah. The public and the record industry lose interest in them. Their popularity wanes. Mm. Their fans start to dwindle and they're trying desperately to hang on to the few fans who really care. Mm. Um, you know, can you tell me who will still care? Just a few people. Yeah. By the time they're bald and they've still been singing Mbop their entire 60, 70 years. Yeah. Just a few people left to care. Yeah. Mm. So... Eventually, they end up recording a Christmas album or an album of duets with whatever famous friends are still speaking to them. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the, what you would predict as a career trajectory for these young boys. Mm. Possibly this is a comment on mm. the ageism and superficiality of the world and particularly the entertainment industry. Oh, yeah. Um, how damaging this can be to personal and professional relationships. Well, they do well to see that at this stage as yeah, well. well yeah, well, I guess they've, maybe they've got Good advice from their parents or something. Hmm. Anyway, that kind of career trajectory is what I had thought had happened to Hanson. Because hmm. as far as I'm concerned, they sort of had this song and they disappeared. I think we were in our mid-20s when this song came out. Hmm. So we weren't really their demographic. Perhaps not. I never really paid that much attention to them anyway, even though the song was pretty much everywhere. It really was, yeah. Yeah. And from reading about them, some of that actually did happen to them. So they've never really had another really big hit. Their record company did lose interest in them, and after it was bought by new owners, yeah. they have made a Christmas album. <laughs> oh, right. Yes, and they also haven't re released a duets album, but they have re-released Mbop as a duet with another band. Yes. Called Busted. Yes, yes, right, right. Yeah, but actually they've remained quite successful as independent recording and touring artists with quite a big fan base. Hmm. They also still have very good hair. Oh, yeah, it's just not, yes. not blonde anymore. It's, it's no, no. Lost some of the innocence yeah. and uh, blondness. And I think I think Taylor lost the high register in his voice pretty much as soon as the song came out from looking at YouTube videos. All right. Um, I don't think he, he, he could ever sing it like that again. Yeah. It's important to the Hanson boys that they do want someone to at least care about them going bald. <laughs> yes. And when I go bald, I, I, I think I'd prefer that uh, people not care. I don't, I don't think you want to, you know, to get greeting cards with condolences or sorry, sorry to hear of your loss. Yes. Get wig soon. Yes. That sort of thing. No, I'd, I'd rather people think of me the same way and, and not change. But, you know, maybe the, the handsome boys will um, just eventually hide themselves away in some sort of hair hospice. Oh. Never to emerge. Yeah. So... What would your approach to baldness be? I mean, there are different ways of Ooh. coping. Well, I think it is starting to happen. Yeah. I, I do notice my forehead getting a little bit larger, uh, and I don't think it's a tumour. It's just your brain expanding due to all the wisdom you're, you're accumulating. Well, yes, in smooth music, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much details to hang on to. But, you know, there's the leave it as it is approach. There's the shave it off approach. Yeah. There's obviously the comb over approach. There's the wig approach. Sure. 
There's all these ways of coping. It'll depend, I think. I'm tending towards the shave off oh, yeah. approach, but if I don't have a good skull, you know, there could be a problem there. I might have to pursue other things. Yeah, it's a risk, isn't it? Unless you do some kind of imaging of what your skull looks like, you really don't know. Yeah, and you do have to give it a good go because when you first shave your head, it's going to be a horrible, pasty, white, Darth Vader-looking type skull with less scars, Yes, uh, hopefully, unless you're very bad with the with the hair trimmers. But yeah, it will, it'll take a while to get some color into it. Um, maybe use a bit of Donald Trump bronzer. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Just, just for the first couple of weeks and try to use less and less of it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, or, or just hats, I suppose. That's the other way. Hats. Oh, well, that's that's also another baldness alternative. Yes. You can wear a lot more hats, caps. Yeah. Caps on backwards if you want to look younger. You kind of need to find yourself a signature hat. Hmm. Is it a baseball cap? Is it a like a Yorkshireman's flat cap? Is it a beret? Is it a I don't know, cowboy hat, tam o shanter. I'm not really sure. Pretend to be Indiana Jones, if you want. Yes. Have a, have a bull whip as well. Yeah, well, that would, that would distract from your baldness if you were carrying a whip everywhere. People would say, oh, who's that young nerd over there cosplaying? <laughs> <laughs> He's so youthful yes. and vigorous. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, you know, I would say to the, the boys at this age, worry less about your hair. And uh, if you're picturing old age, worry less about hair. Worry more about incontinence. That's probably a greater tragedy. Yes. And later, even later in the song, uh, they return to this again, singing, in an umbop they're gone, in an umbop they're not there, and repeat, they're gone, they're not there. Until you lose your hair. Suddenly they flipped it. Oh, I didn't even notice. Yeah, yeah. So now the ones who didn't care enough to hang around initially are coming back at the end when the Hansons have lost their hair, presumably to make fun of their baldness? Um, not sure. Well, maybe this is just like a, an end of life thing where the, the family's dwindled away, their friends are dwindled away. Now they're dying. They're bald. They're close to death. Everyone's coming back. Well, to see if they've still got some of them mbop dollars to leave to anyone. <laughs> well, possibly, yes. But it's nice that they explain for new English speakers, uh, the meaning of the word gone. In an umbop, they're gone. In an umbop, they're not there. So gone means not there in their expanded definition, which is, is very good. Ah, that's good. Something for the adults, something educational for the kids. <laughs> yeah, and the foreigners, yes. <laughs> gone means not there. Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> Uh, moving on to the third verse. Plant a seed, mm. plant a flower, plant a rose. Yes. You can plant any one of those. It's true. So three things, three things you can plant there, apparently. Yes. Representing the different types of people or the different types of relationships that you might initiate. A seed, a flower, or a rose. You can plant any one of those, Hanson tells us. Except, of course, I'm pretty sure a rose is a flower. Well, a rose is a flower and a plant, but... I'm pretty sure they were using plant as a verb to plant a, a seed, a, a flower, a rose. Well, that's yes. true. You can plant a seed, yes. You can plant yes. a rose bush and that will grow. Uh -huh. But if you just go and plant a flower, not really going to grow. It will just die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's that sort of, yeah, literal uh, consequences, if you take it very literally, yes. Yes. But yeah, so, I mean, a rose is a flower, so that could take us from three options down to just two now. Mm -hmm. Plant a seed or a flower, and of course a seed can also become a flowering plant, uh, a flowering plant which might also be a rose. So instead of three options, they're maybe only giving us one option. Yeah. We have to plant a flowering plant. Or uh, in this analogy, try only one type of relationship. Oh. It could be saying, don't venture outside your race. Keep the bloodlines pure. Keep your hair blonde like ours. Oh. Um, are they saying, don't venture outside sexual norms? Because flowers only exist for pollination and reproduction. And they only want flowers. They only want relationships that can breed. Oh, 
It's all sounding like eugenics and Nazi propaganda, and the name Hansen literally means Sons of Hans, a traditional Scandi German name of the Aryan master race. And uh, as you mentioned, the three brothers, they now have 15 children between them, and that's enough to start a cult and start amassing weapons to overthrow the government. Uh, yes. We're watching. We're watching you, Hansen. Yeah, I just wonder if this is related to Zach Hansen's Pinterest page. Did you read about that? Ooh. No. What's on that? Uh, yeah. So, Zach Hans, I think it was Zach. Sorry, I get the confused. The deacon. Yeah. So, if I'm going to accuse him of something, I better make sure that I'm accusing the right one. Sure. But this is actually something he's owned up to and apologized for. Ooh. Scandal. He had a Pinterest page, which I thought was mostly, you know, about uh, bathroom designs or interesting cushion covers, that kind of thing. But- oh. In Zach's case, it was also a place for racist, transphobic, homophobic, sexist, pro-gun uh, memes. Ooh. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. And what, uh, mixed in with a bit of bathroom stuff? I don't think there was. Well, the bathroom stuff didn't get reported. It was mostly the uh, oh, okay. problematic stuff that he, that he claims were all uh, jokes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Innocent yeah. jokes. Innocent jokes, yeah. Uh, it was an innocent time. <laughs> it was. D different times. He's taken his Pinterest board down now, so we can't actually look uh, at it. Oh, well, that's disturbing. Indeed. Indeed. I know my um, interpretation of the seed, flower, rose, uh, it went a bit dark then. Um, but conversely, the boys maybe just don't know much about gardening. So, you know, maybe none of that um, Nazi stuff. Although, although after what you've just said, yeah, hmm, I don't know. Um, yes. yeah. But, you know, seed, flower, rose, maybe that just exhausted their entire botanical vocabulary mm. and they, they didn't know what else to say. <laughs> they didn't have any other examples. Keep planting, to find out which one grows. Keep planting to find out which one grows. Yeah. But mysteriously, towards the end of the song, they sing... Can you tell me if it's going to be a daisy or a rose? So they slip daisies in at the towards the end without specifying that flower earlier at the planting stage, uh, which which makes it hard to follow their instructions, actually. Yes. So earlier, they didn't care what flower they got, only that it grew well. But now it seems with the, um, can you tell me if it's a daisy or a rose, it, it now seems they're getting a, a bit choosy about what sort of flower they get indicating that they also perhaps got choosy about uh, their relationships, wouldn't accept just anybody's friendship. But also opening up to more types of relationships. Well, yeah, but they seem to want to know which type of flower it is in order to, I think, disregard one. Uh... I'm starting to think that the Hansons are the fickle ones who are suddenly disappearing from people's lives. Uh... Sorry, you're a daisy, don't want you. And of course, there's, there's much more to growing plants and indeed relationships than simply planting. Uh, you don't have to be a detached observer looking to see which flower grows. You can actively take care of them by watering, fertilizing, pruning, and so on. Take care of a relationship, and it will probably grow too, uh. since maybe they want a weed that looks after itself. Uh, therefore, they want relationships of similar convenience. Uh. Maybe all they deserve is just a parasitic and strangling vine that will grow to imprison them and suck away all their, their nourishment, if that's their attitude. Well, huh. I mean, some forms of daisies can grow as a weed. All right. Yeah. I mean, a, a rose is a much more contained thing. They're generally propagated by grafting, so they're not just going to spread, whereas a daisy can spread all through your garden, become a weed. Oh, yeah. And it can self-seed, whatever. So two different kinds of relationship there, I guess. Yeah, maybe they want someone who can breed easily or they <laughs> they want someone who's more selective in their breeding. What, what, yeah. I wonder what they're saying. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's possible they didn't think about it that uh, that deeply and they were just looking out the window going, uh, yeah, flowers. What's, oh, that one's a rose. Um, what's that one? Uh, daisy? Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's possible. But they were very yeah. precocious, you know. Yeah, so that's we, true. Uh, we don't know. Yeah. Yes, on the subject of relationships, if we can uh, just step back to the first verse. Oh, sure. Uh, the idea of how many relationships we have, because they're talking mm. about we have so many relationships, only one or two will last. Mm. I was interested in how many relationships do we have? 
Mm. Now, my search for an answer led me to a number that is quite important when it comes to relationships. It's called Dunbar's number. I don't know if you've heard of this. No, uh, no. No, named after the British anthropologist Robin Dunbar. Uh -huh. And uh, that number is 150. And that's the average number of relationships across a person's life? This is actually the number of relationships uh, on average that a person can maintain at any one time. Oh, I don't think I could ever do that. Well, you might be surprised. So, this uh, anthropologist Dunbar um, suggested there was a relationship between an animal's brain size and the social group size that they could maintain. Okay. Uh, he used like imaged brains and then he observed the time spent on social grooming, which is a, you know, an important social behavior in primates. Yes, picking the nits out of your fellow primates' hair. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. And he decided that there's a ratio between the size of a neocortex, which is part of the brain associated with cognition and language, mm -hmm. a ratio between the size of that and the body size. And that tells you how complex a social system you can handle. So- right. He's applied this number to humans, like ancient humans, modern humans, and yes, 150. When you're really young, like the Hansons were, um, your heads look so much bigger. Well, true. At that young age. So well, that's true. They're even more sociable. That's true. I, I didn't see anything about uh, age-related um, social group sizes. Mm. But you can break down this 150 into different subsets. So, the closest circle of relationships, mm. uh, what you would call your loved ones, that's on average five people. Sure. Now, given that Taylor Hansen has seven children and a wife, that's probably <laughs> bad news for three of those people. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to have your favorites. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, then you've got your good friends and there's on average about 15 of those. Less close friends, about 50. And 150 meaningful contacts. And then if you move out of that 150, you've got- Facebook friends. <laughs> yeah, 500 acquaintances, 1,500, just people that you kind of know. Yeah. And people can move in and out of that. So, uh, we can maintain 150, what we would think of as meaningful relationship at any one time. Hmm. But as you asked, uh, how many relationships over our lifetime can we have? Hmm. So, there is some data if we just talk about romantic and or sexual relationships. Okay. Yeah. And I found an article online that was titled, Science Says This Is How Many Dates You Have to Go On Before You Find The One. Oh, okay. Now, by science, uh, I mean a survey conducted by a dating agency that was done to co coincide <laughs> with the release of a paperback <laughs> of a novel. But uh, anyway- Is there a photo on the website of someone in a white coat at least? Almost certainly. All right. So, there's some data here. It's slightly different for women and men. Uh, number of relationships, seven if you're a woman, eight if you're a man. Hmm. Sexual partners, seven if you're a woman, 10 if you're a man. Hmm. So, down to actual relationships, shorter ones that last a year or less, three or four. Oh. Relationships that last more than a year, two. Hmm. There's other things about how many times you've been cheated on and stuff. But hmm. comparing that back to the song where Taylor's singing- you have so many relationships in your life and only one or two relationships will last. That's actually surprisingly accurate. Oh. Because if we look at the data on relationships over a year or more, it comes up with two. So, good to see that the anecdotal data presented in the song uh, <laughs> is roughly in agreement with the current paradigm. So, well done, boys. Well done. Well yes. done, Hanson. Yes. Right on the money. Yeah. So, a little known uh, conspiracy theory group. Uh, they're known as the uh, Plant Truther Movement. I don't know if you've heard of them. Plant Truther. Yes, yes. Now, no. I, I don't know for sure whether the Hanson boys were part of this movement, but mm. the lyrics certainly suggest they have an interest in this. Oh, with the planting. Yes, exactly. Now, I did mention before that there are no strangers to controversy, mm. such as Zach Hanson's Pinterest board. Mm -hmm. So, as background, you'll be aware there's a widely held, quite mainstream belief and it's really propagated by big garden centers and the uh, botanico industrial complex <laughs> that if you <laughs> plant a specific type of seed, you can predict what type of plant will grow from that seed, right? Well, sure. So, you've seen it. Go to the hardware store, go to the nurseries, garden centers, even the supermarkets. You'll see packets of seeds with pictures on them. Supposedly, you can grow your own tomatoes yeah. or cucumbers or 
fruit, vegetables, daisies. Little sachets of them, yeah. Exactly. Many different types of flowers from these seeds. Hmm. And the type of seed that you buy will dictate the type of plant that will grow. Ideally, yes. Yes. Now, the plant truthers believe that this is a lie perpetuated by a global conspiracy. Uh -huh. So, if you ask a plant truther, they will tell you to open up one of these seed packets. Now, if you look at these seeds, mm. some of these so-called seeds, they just look like bits of fluff or crumbs. They're tiny. Oh, yeah. How could you fit a load of cucumbers or paper daisies inside one of those? It's impossible. Of course. Right? It's crazy. Yeah. Now, the seed companies would have you believe that you can take a whole lot of these so-called seeds, plant them in little neat rows in the dirt, and they will all grow into the same type of plant. That's my understanding. Yeah. The plant truthers will tell you that is not true. Right. Now, I have done my own research on this. Oh, no. That's never uh, a good sign. <laughs> I can... <laughs> oh, except you're a responsible scientist, yes. Well, I can understand where they're coming from, right? Uh -huh. So, initially, you plant your seeds. Initially, you might see a whole load of plants that all look similar. Uh -huh. But if you then leave those plants alone to grow for a few weeks or a few months, mm -hmm. those little baby plants, and you come back in a few months, those little baby plants haven't turned into a load of cucumbers or tomatoes. They've just turned into a load of random weeds. They're not the neatly ordered, beautiful tomato plants you thought you were getting. Oh. Right? So, you planted these seeds and they've just turned into just random weeds. That's what happens if you just leave your plants alone to grow. You experienced this? Many times. Oh. Many times. Okay. Oh, well, I will defer to you because I, yes. I don't plant anything. I'm, I, I yeah. stay well clear of a garden. I mean, as, as you pointed out, it is also possible to water those plants and prune them and weed them. Hmm. I have not tried that. All right. Yeah. But, but left to their own devices, these plants will just turn into a load of weeds. Oh, okay. Yeah. You sure they didn't maybe just get overtaken by the weeds? I'm only saying what I see. Okay. Yes. Say what you see. Yeah. All right. Yep. Very good. I cannot speculate about what would have happened otherwise, but I'm saying- If you'd bothered to do the job properly. There's no way of knowing. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. 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 No, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You sound like one of these plant truthers already then. Well, I'm not saying I believe in it. I'm just saying do your own research. Oh, I wish you wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard too many people- uh, some people really shouldn't. Yeah. They should do no research whatsoever. Well, that's right. They should rely on proper experts to yeah. do the research. Yeah. And just take what they say. Yeah. And believe it. If there's consensus. Now, when you move on into the song, you can see they're actually starting to call out this global conspiracy, right? You've got, uh, hmm. you plant a seed, plant a flower, plant a rose, you can plant any one of those. True so far, as we've yeah. we've discussed. Keep planting to find out which one grows. It's a secret. No one knows. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And in fact, the whole end of the song is them really just emphasizing and re-emphasizing yep. yep. this. They get very argumentative, like yep. in a childish way. You say you can, but you don't know. They're talking directly to the botanical industrial complex here. They're taunting them, goading them, trying to reveal the lie for what it is. Ah. Can you tell me? You said you can, but you don't know. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Thus exposing the lie. Well, wow, they have a much greater interest in um, planting than I gave them credit yep. for. Yep. If my microphone wasn't on a stand, I'd have dropped it. <laughs> Golly. The heads of this movement are anonymous, are they? Yes. Like plant anon? Look. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And if, look, huh. if something mysteriously happens to this podcast feed, uh, well, I know what I think. And you call a spade a spade. That's, well, that's what the garden centers would like you to call it. <laughs> yeah. But again, do your own research on what a spade is. Don't, <laughs> exactly. Don't let anybody show you pictures. <laughs> With labels on, sure, just because they're printed out, they've got a label on them. Yeah. So I'm ready to talk about the uh, the music video. Mm. Mm. Another mystery. Well, yes. I mean, we often ask ourselves, does the music video have anything to do with the song and its lyrics? And I think yes, this time. Mm. I think it's an extension of the lyrics. Um, did you have any thoughts? Well, I mean, other than possibly it's showing examples of places that you can ejaculate. 
Well, okay, yeah, I suppose. There's a cave. There's a private. Yeah. There's the moon, obviously. Uh, maybe not so much the bus. No. Well, uh, you can try. Um, I guess. Either that or it's just showing that the handsome boys are beings that exist outside time and space and they can simultaneously be in their parents' living room and also at the beach or on the moon or in a flower. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes, there is some intercutting of yes. of different scenes. Yeah. But for me, uh, the video is about the Hanson brothers and their long struggle with motorized transportation. Uh. It starts out with them walking down a suburban sidewalk and then they break into a run. Bit of a cliche uh, demonstrating that you have to walk before you can run, but that's kind of part of the theme. And then they stop running and hail a taxi. Mm. Like uh, maybe they were tired of running, not very clear there, um, but they're laughing and having a great time in the taxi. But then they stop the taxi and they get out at a bus stop and they wait for a bus, mm. even though they were just in a taxi. I was wondering whether the taxi driver kicked them out for mucking around. Oh, well, I, I did look closely. I mean, they did pay him, like they were ready to get out. Yeah, okay. And, well, I mean, you know, they were they were laughing and giggling and yeah. rolling around a little bit. But um, Cause they were then mucking around on the bus too, hanging from the poles and things. Yeah, I mean, that's true, yeah. Yeah. They start to have fun. But to recap, they started out walking, broke into a run, and maybe I thought, okay, maybe they realized they were going to miss their bus and then even after running for a bit, uh, they still thought, no, we're still not going to make the bus stop in time. So, of course, let's get a taxi to the bus stop. Makes perfect sense. Yes. But more into my theory now, I think it could be that they were originally intending to walk or run all the way to their final destination. And why is that? Well, because they've always had a fear of motorized transport. Uh -huh. And why the fear? Well... Uh, because all those relationships that they've lost in an umbop, you know, in the song within the 12 years they've been alive, all those relationships often ended when they saw friends get on motorized transport only to be driven away forever. Ah. Families move town or parents get divorced. Whatever the reason, the, the sight of someone waving from a car window, uh, that is often the last of them you see. Uh, I thought you were going to say they all died in an accident. Oh, no. Oh, ooh. oh I hope not. Oh, that's horrible. But it's possible. So I think motorized transport triggers the traumatic memories of all those people gone in an umbop, uh -huh. um, which could also be the, the noise they heard too. Rrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
a sort of vintage film of themselves in the darker, older city mm. uh, where transport was louder, dirtier, and even more dangerous. Even here, they can laugh and dance as they, they realize that motor transport was never the problem. It was just a symptom of the relationships that they feared losing. The real problem is that the boys don't know how to nurture any relationships. And they demonstrate this in the next scene where they're like uh, standing together on a dirt and gravel road. And here they act out the lyrics as they're sung, plant a seed, plant a flower, plant a rose. And in turn, each brother while standing, holding their arms out and let things drop from their hand. The first has a handful of seeds dropped. Then the second brother has a handful of dusty dirt, not even proper soil, yeah. and he drops that. And the last brother has a tiny handful of water, which he drops. Mm. And all this while they were standing. So there's, there's no way enough dirt landed on the seeds to plant them or enough water landed on that to bring the seeds to germinate. It's the metaphor of another relationship doomed almost before it's begun. Ah, yes. The relationship slipping through your fingers. Yes, that's another good uh, analogy. Mm. But they don't know this yet. You know, they're, they're still full of hope and optimism after conquering motor transport. And so they, they continue with that yeah. in the new scene where suddenly they're in an open yellow Jeep that looks like it's from World War II. And uh, they're driving themselves on this dirt road, even though they're still way too young to drive. But I don't think it's a public road, so maybe that's fine. But they're not wearing seatbelts and, and they're jumping from seat to seat while the Jeep is moving, so that's that's very foolhardy, um, and they and they might lose a few more relationships that way. Um, but they're kind of so giddy and lightheaded with their transport breakthroughs. I, I feel we have to forgive this. Yeah, and, yeah. and importantly, I think they all have a turn at driving it. So they're, mm. I think, it's representing that they're all undergoing this kind of rebirth. Yes, yes, oh, d definitely, yes. It's they're all as one equally. And next, in the cutaway scenes uh, showing the boys performing the song. We see they're now filmed playing against a green screen where they superimpose a background time-lapse video of a flower blooming. And um, it's very obviously fake, uh, but I think that represents the boys' hopeless optimism for the future of their relationships, expecting them to blossom somehow, but without any real help or nurturing from them. So, But no matter... They're still on the big high from conquering transport, which gives them the freedom to go back between the city and the beach at will. There's lots of intercutting of both places. And uh, they're even shown dancing on the moon. Mm. Such are the possibilities of modern transport. Uh -huh. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then finally, things start to take a last tragic turn. We start to see a final form of transport intercutting amongst the other joyous scenes. The boys are now rollerblading. Yes. This is a backward, regressive step. Well, yes. After the more sophisticated motor transport, yes. Mm. Uh, does this indicate their, their psychological progress is temporary? That you can never really overcome your problems or significantly change who you are? Perhaps so. And as if to emphasize this, some final shots of the rollerblading are actually played in reverse. The boys are literally going backward. And the final shot of the video shows the boys going back through the cave that had rebirthed them, so indicating that all the progress is now undone. Oh. As Yoda said, The cave. Remember your failure at the cave. Remember your failure at the cave. Very good, yes. I got a Yoda reference back in. and It's been ages since that. Yeah. I did wonder why they were running to the bus when they could have just used their rollerblades at the beginning. Yeah. But I, I guess that maybe they kept their rollerblades with them but didn't want to use them until all this motorised transport got too much for them. I, you know, I guess I, I just I, I can't see it as, as anything more than a regression. Yeah. Yeah. No motors involved, just wheels. At least they're not walking and running there, I guess. Yeah. That's something. But we could also see it as a, as a further progression forward. So we've got all these modes of transport based on internal combustion engines, very polluting. Yeah, true, So true. they've passed through all of those. And I, I think a rocket to the moon <laughs> is not a very environmentally sustainable form of transport. They've been through all of those and then they've realized, but wait. Right. They've gone too far, they've realized. Gone too far. 
Just rollerblade, zero emissions. It's a comment on climate change. Yep. And the, the only way forward is to live simpler. Yep. Yeah, that's, that could be it. In any case, the music video does show the boys enjoy each other's company. That's true. And um, that must be some consolation while they were being traumatized by all the relationship breakdowns in their first 12 years of life. And making this about me again, I was also <laughs> one of three brothers uh, that were only a couple of years apart in age. But rather than being really close, enjoying each other's company and, and being creative together to delight a worldwide audience, <laughs> our thing was more to actively hate and fight with each other. Um, alternately, out of boredom or cruel amusement or for revenge sometimes. Yes. We'd chase each other around the family house, usually armed only with one of my dad's very smelly house slippers. And um, when one of us stumbled, we would be set upon, and that slipper was forced over our mouth and nose <laughs> until we were forced to huff that stinky slipper air. Oh. And to this day, I avoid smelling the inside of slippers. It must be hard to do. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm in a safe space where I could um, I could talk about that. And I'm, I'm glad to get that off my chest well, th and off my face. <laughs> thank you for sharing. I can breathe. Yeah, ah. yeah. Well, um, I could move on to other theories from the internet if you're cool with that. Yeah, sure. Uh, did you find any yourself that you're uh, interested in? Not so much theories, more... Uh, general comments. Oh, okay. There's one here from someone called Mark Summers mm. who says, I'd never really paid much attention to the lyrics of this song before and I must admit it's pro-communist bias surprised me. <laughs> that was my second theory I was going to read <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah. Mm. yeah I, that, that's, uh, that's interesting. Well, I wonder what he's picking up on there. Is it the uh, possibly the government subsidised uh, public bus transport <laughs> in the video clip? Yes. or? Uh, but he's talking about the he's talking about the lyrics, isn't he? Yeah, so, yeah. I do not know communal gardening. Yeah, it could be like yeah, the killing fields, yeah. uh, Cambodia. You know, against all of the intelligentsia and making everybody go back to farming. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Khmer Rouge. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. Definitely. Mm. There was a user zero zero one one zero 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 one zero 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 who says uh, Hanson socks. Uh, and they make me feel icky as they prance around like fairies. Yes. That seems to be a fairly typical comment of the early 2000s, uh, which was definitely what one might call the uh, backlash period uh, that always follows a period of huge popularity like they had. Yes. Along those lines, I found one that said, yeah, mm, bop, more like mm, gay, right? <sighs> wow. Yeah. That's insightful. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's often true that people find very personal meanings in song lyrics. And this has never been more true than for user Kenkuru, who says, this song is about my octopus plushie, which my mum washed too many times and became discolored. Sad face. Oh. So there you go. I mean, if it was like a fluffy toy octopus and it lost its hair. Yeah. Well, I think that's what a plushie is. That's it's, true, yes, yes. It's a fluffy soft. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's it. It got old, it lost its hair, and he no longer cared. Yeah, no, yeah, of course. Or he did care about the discoloration yeah. and possibly the hair loss. Well, perhaps it was hmm. his parents that threw it away because they didn't care, and that's what scarred him. Yep. And um, plushies are, um, are not to be confused with furries, who are people who might like to dress up as furry octopuses and, um, or octopi and um, have relations. But that's okay in consenting adults. That's fine. Sure. And I guess as a furry, you might dress up as a plushie sometimes. Yeah, I guess there's, you could have a, a subsect of furries who are plushies. Who knows? Hmm. Well, you say you do, but you don't know. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so you can, but you can't. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> um <laughs> Uh, that's all the, the theories I, I saw, really. Um, I'm on to misheard lyrics in this song. Yeah, sure. There's a few of those. A few of those, yeah, yeah. Use a Phil star on the line, you have so many relationships in this life, only one or two will last. Uh, they heard it as, yesterday a South Asian took his life, he only wanted to relax. <laughs> yes. 
Mm. That's a sad state of affairs. That is. That is. Um, it's a bit early to be highlighting the the plight of workers at the iPhone factories. I don't think that they were around yet, but um, yeah, yeah, interesting thought. Yeah. Uh, there's an Australian user called Mindgate180 who heard, so hold on, the ones who really care, in the end, they'll be the only ones there. But they heard it as, so we just gone to Medicare, the Indian man was the only one there. So these are some racially specific uh, things people are hearing. Yeah. Medicare, for anyone wondering, is a government-funded yeah. uh, health system for everyone, uh, which America should have, if you want to get onto that. Yeah. yeah. It's a good idea. You go through all the pain and strife, you turn your back, gone so fast. You go through all the pain and strife, then you turn your back and they're gone so fast. Somebody heard the end of that line as, and you turn your back on God so fast. Yes. Which I think yeah. that line works okay, but for a different song maybe, because the Hansons are pretty churchy. I don't think they'll they'll do that, no. Mm. Well, no, but they could be complaining that that is the way the world is going. Yeah, but they'll never turn their back on God. No, they, they won't, but I've, I, others others may do. Sure. Other, other weaker people. Yeah. Who aren't as strong in their faith. Yeah. When you get old, start losing your hair. Can you tell me who will still care? This was heard as, when you get old, stuff lives in your hair. <laughs> That's true. I think that is true at, at any age, but uh, maybe more so as you get older. Yeah. There's a lot of mouths to feed yes. on your scalp. Yeah. I had one that was also from that line, can you tell me who will still care, which I quite like, which is, can your tummy hear a whispering cow? <laughs> You've got to wow. sing it to yourself. It does fit quite nicely. Can, can your, your tummy, tummy hear a whispering cow? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> I'll, I'll work on that one. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll see if I can make sense of it. I've got a personal one, actually. Mm. I remember back in uh, one of my first jobs uh, when this song came out. I think it was uh, one of the guys in the warehouse uh, where they had the radio playing. Uh, and he liked to sing, mm bop, just can't wait for my balls to drop. <laughs> Because he was a bit of a larrikin. Yeah. What a character. Yeah. I think his name was Richard. Thanks, mate. Cheers, Richard. That's all I got for, for lyrics, uh, Miss Heard. If you, any others? Uh, well, the only one I had was, there's so many relationships in this life, he wanted to call his dog Ajax. You go through all the painted knives <laughs> and you turn your back on God so fast. <laughs> painted knives? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And your dog Ajax. Yep. Which, yeah, it was close to... Uh, he only wanted to relax. Yes, the, um, exactly. The poor South Asian yeah. took his life. Yes. Some coming together there. Yeah. I've only got one other uh, slight piece of trivia, which is like George Lucas, Hansen decided not to sell off their merchandising rights and they selected their own products to brand as merch, ah. including Hansenopoly. Really? Uh, a version of Monopoly. Yeah. Like proper license by whoever it is that owns. I believe so. Ah. Yes. Yes. And it's uh, described as, um, as you travel around the board, you are traveling around the world, touring mm. through cities and countries, traveling from Tulsa to Tokyo. I think yeah. that's where the boys were from, Tulsa. Buy and sell clubs, arenas, radio stations, recording studios, and websites to build your career and your music empire. Oh. Very exciting. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if the boys ever uh, followed any of that. Like, I don't think they would have been buying arenas and radio stations. But, so no. They might have bought a, maybe a club. Yeah. Well, I think they own their own record label, but yeah, I don't know what else they own. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. 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 Well, it's only been several mbops of the 15-minute variety, but I think it's uh, time we were gone, uh, which also means we're not there. Thanks for listening. Send us a message, or better still, a speak pipe, and don't be afraid of motorised transport, although be wary. As a pedestrian, look both ways. Thank you. Say goodbye, Dave. Oh, bye-bye. Thanks. Lyrics of the Lost. Lost.